Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 10, Lesson 2, Multiplying Polynomials by Monomials. After this lesson, you need to be able to multiply polynomials by monomials. Let's learn multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. To find the product of a monomial and a binomial, so remember that's two terms, then you can use the distributive property. In fact, you can use the distributive property to multiply a monomial and longer polynomials as well. And just like adding and subtracting, when we multiply a monomial with a polynomial, then their product is going to be a polynomial as well. So just like when we were adding and subtracting, the variables are going to stay the same, only the exponents really are going to change here. Example one, multiply a polynomial by a monomial. Simplify negative two x times four x squared plus three x minus five. So for this, we're just going to use the distributive property and multiply everything out. So if we have negative two x times four x squared and then negative two x times three x, and then we're going to subtract the 5 times the negative 2x as well. So we can see that down here, the negative 2x is multiplied by everything. When we're multiplying, this is where our product rule of exponents is going to be super necessary. Because we're going to multiply the coefficients, so 2 times 4 is 8, and it was negative. We can see that there. But when we multiply x times x squared, this is really x1 times x2. Remember, we add the exponents. So these two together would become x3. Then we do the same thing for the next set of terms. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And then x1 times x1 becomes x2. And last, we have negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. And there's just a single x with nothing to multiply it by, so it's still just there. Now simplifying this a little bit more to fix some of these double signs. If you have double signs, same sign like here is going to be positive. Different signs is going to be subtraction. So we would end up with negative 3x to the third minus 6x squared plus 10x. Example 2, simplify expressions. So simplify this polynomial term. Here we can see there's a couple different things happening. We have multiplication here and here, and we actually have some subtraction happening there. So first let's multiply stuff out since that's going to come first in order of operations. So 3n times 6n to the third, we can distribute that, and we would get 18n to the fourth. Then if we do 3n times negative 4n, we would get 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12, and then n times n is n to the second power. For our other part, I'm just going to take this as negative 2 instead of subtracting 2. We can think about it either way, but negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, and then there's no n outside, so we just are going to keep n to the fourth. And then negative 2 times negative 11, a negative times a negative is a positive, so positive 22. Now we can combine like terms, so let's regroup things that are alike. We have positive 18 n to the fourth here, minus 18 n to the fourth there, so we group those together. There are no other n squared, so that's by itself, and there's no other constant, so 22 is by itself. Finally, combining things together, these would just disappear. 18 minus 18 is 0, so we're left with negative 12 n squared plus 22. Example 3, write and evaluate a polynomial expression. Our real context here is architecture. The world's largest basket is a building. Each face of the building is in the shape of a trapezoid, with the largest face having a height of h and two base lengths, h plus 90 and 2h plus 84. Write and simplify an expression to represent the area of one side of the building. So first, the fact that it says write and simplify an expression tells me there's not actually going to be an answer. There's just going to be something at the end that has some h's in it and some probably some other numbers. So let's let h be the height of the trapezoid. And then in the formula for a trapezoid, which we can see right here, a and b are the two bases. So let's say a is h plus 90, and b, the other base, is 2h plus 84. Once we set what a and b are equal to, let's plug them into the actual formula. So we can plug in h plus 90 and 2h plus 84. For the trapezoid, we add the two bases together. So let's add all of this together by combining like terms. h plus 2h is 3h. 90 plus 84 is 174. Now we're getting closer to the end. Let's distribute the half and the h. So half of 3 is 1.5. h times h is h to the second power. Half of 174 is 87. And we still have to multiply that h, even though there's nothing to combine it with, so we'd have an h. So our final would be 3 over 2 h squared, which I put 1.5 instead of 3 halves, plus 87h. So this expression here is the area for one side of the building. Now, that doesn't really look like it's an area in the terms that we're used to, but we don't actually know what the height is. It tells us that the height is h. If they gave us a number for the height, then we could just plug that in and figure out the area quickly. But since they don't tell us, we got to leave it as it is.